Paddock is a training and exercise space for sport education and performance. Each week, we look to grow ideas and innovation through conversation from beautiful Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, with Benjamin Reynolds from the Manukau Institute of Technology School of Sport. Uh, he's a senior lecturer at the School of Sport and an overall funny guy, but most of all, also a great, great educator. Um, I think we're going to hand it over straight to Ben so he can actually introduce himself and tell us all the good stuff and the interesting things that, um, that, that Ben can share about himself and his uh, journey through um, sport also education. Ben, good morning. How are you doing, buddy? Yo, the team. My name is Ben and Fran's got me on board today to have a chat. So uh, about me, uh, I, was, I was a physiotherapist before I came to MIT. So I did that for 10 years. So I, I worked with sports teams and musculoskeletal conditions in the general public. And then I made my way to the School of Sport at MIT. So since then, I've been teaching all the physio type subjects like anatomy and physiology, structural kinesiology. And then when we got a degree, I moved in and we taught massage. Uh, so that's that's where we are right now. Um, and, t- and tell me, um, what, what, are, what subjects are you currently t- uh, working on, Ben? So yeah, the anatomy, physiology, structural kinesiology, massage nutrition, uh, physiological preparation for um, sport. Also, you, so some, some pretty you got, intimidating subjects. That's what but, I was going to say. But uh, we break them down so they all make sense. Yeah, because those, those are all the subjects that uh, when, you're, when you're leaving school, it sounds like uh, you want to run away from. You don't want to hear all those hard subjects when you're thinking of sport when you leave school. Um, but I know per- particularly well that you make it very approachable and very fun uh, for the students. Um, though these, these are really heavy hitting subjects, uh, Ben, um, how do you make these subjects fun, approachable, and why are they so relevant for, um, for students that are going into the field of sports science or sport and recreation? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really annoying when a student walks in the room and all they see are these large words that make no sense and they think, right, I'm out of here. But what we do is the first thing we do is we break words down into their prefixes, their suffixes, and their root words. So it all starts to make a lot of sense. So every time you see the word epi, it means over and above. Every time you see endo, it means deep or inside. So every time we see a word, we break it down and we write down the prefix and the suffix. And then it doesn't take long before all these words start repeating themselves and it all makes sense. Um, Every time you see the word site, it means cell. Myo means muscle, myocyte, muscle cell. Osteo means bone, osteocyte, bone cell. So it doesn't take long and it starts making sense. And then you get this great big vocabulary that makes you sound as smart as you really are. And, and that's, that's actually really good to hear because um, basically sports students, they are pretty smart. Um, when, when you think of a sports students and how far they can go um, in, their, in their sports career, um, this is outside the field, outside the playing field. Um, how far can, can, can students go that, that actually going to a, a lecture theater or a classroom with you, um, where, where can they, their journeys end up? Well, with, with the advent of social media, um, it's almost limitless. If, if you've got a little bit of a personality combined with some good knowledge, there's, there's so much you can do. Um, I know I follow, I follow a lot of people on, on Instagram and through Facebook and so forth that inspire me. Um, and they're not necessarily conventional academics. They're people who've um, chosen a role in personal training or sport, got educated, and then disseminate good knowledge and um, acceptable little bites that people can understand. And I mean, that's what we try to do with the School of Sport. Not... Um, 
not make things so complicated that no one understands them. Break it down into small bites so that knowledge can be useful and it can enhance your performance. Can you think of, a, can you think of an awesome, um, you don't have to mention the name, obviously, but um, a, a, good, um, a good story from a graduate student where, where, where all this is, comes through? Oh, I think there's, there's so few. many of our students like, um, who, who maybe come into the school of sport thinking, mm, school's not really for me. It's, I've been, I've always, I kind of hated my teachers, exams suck, and I'm not really that smart, but they come in through the door and they give it a go, half expecting to fail, and then we give them the tools so that suddenly where they used to fail the exams, they start passing. And then by the end of their third year, they're getting really good marks. And we've got lots of students who've gone on and become teachers or who've gone on and are now personal trainers um, or, or high performance coaches at the elite level. And, you know, you really can put your hand on your heart saying, I believe in this person because I've, I've seen their development going through school. And, then, and, I've, and then, I've seen their, their, their attitude towards learning change as well. And that's so, that's so true. I mean, uh, being, one, uh, being a colleague of yours and, and working with the same students, um, that's something that's so important that we can actually back the work that we've put into the students and that the students have actually flourished and that we can back them and say, you know what, hand on heart, this guy's going to be good. Um, and, um, and that's really cool. And, and just to follow their journey and to just, just stay part of their journey, even though they have left the school of sport um, and just be a part of where they're going on to the next step and, and them having that confidence of coming back and sharing with us or even asking us for advice once they've left the school of sport is, is a real special feeling. And I think that makes our, our bond with the students and a little bit the way that we work uh, quite strong. Um, well, we're in the middle of our Auckland lockdown. Uh, we've, gotten the, um, we've gotten this lockdown way after the rest of the world. The rest of the world spent half a year last year in, in lockdowns and we looked at them and I had the, the privilege of actually supporting quite a few communities through uh, a podcast in Latin America, um, supporting them in through these lockdown times of talking about leadership and motivation, et cetera. Um, but we're in the middle of it right now and we're taking the whole brunt of it at, at the moment. Uh, ben, how, how have you been doing? How, are you waiting to get out or can you still deal with another term of classes online i i do miss seeing the students in the flesh but um it's with me it's always been we need to make sure that all our content is available to everyone so um i'm quite i'm quite happy doing things online creating videos or little mp3 podcasts for the students so they can get their work done because with our students you know it's not always uh, that they've got the, the spare time that they're going to make every single class. And pretty early on in my career at MIT, I realized that, you know, sometimes people are going to miss classes because they've got to look after their family and they've got to work. So it's our responsibility to make sure that our content is out there so they can access it when they can, as opposed to, nine to 11 or whenever the class is. I'm, so, I'm absolutely with you on that. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I remember I would, I would make review videos and one of my students says that that's great, but I can't really, I can't use them because I work night shift uh, all night. So when other students might be looking at videos, I can't because I work on a production line. So I can't be looking at a video. So that's when I started doing little MP3 review, uh, small podcast snippets. So the student would be in there on the production line during night shift, listening to my dumb voice and um, talking about anatomy while she was sorting mail or whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I totally get it. And it's not ideal, but it's our job to make sure that the content's out there for our students to, to succeed, regardless of their situation. 
I agree. And, I, and one of the things I've also noticed during this, um, this lockdown and, and last year as well, is that apart from having a class, you end up having a lot of more one-on-one -on -one, uh, class relationships with your, your students and you become available at more, way many more times than our usual class times. Um, you're available during a whole work day or even you know, on weekends to have those catch-ups when they're needed at the moment when the student needs it, when the student's available around their other obligations around life. So that, that's what makes basically our job and, 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 and working as lecturers at the school sport quite special. And one of the things I also in, enjoy quite, quite a bit, and I know we share a couple of times um, or a few times uh, we, we share how to make these videos or these other resources a little bit more catchy for our students to keep them happy, keep them engaged, uh, or just keep them interacting, even if they might not be able to engage, but at least keep, keep them interacting with, uh, with the learning, which is, which is such a key thing. Um, moving a little bit into our topic today, Ben, um, return to play. And this is both return to play, return to study, return to our normal activities, which are, which are usually a lot more active than what we're going through at the moment uh, through lockdown. Yes, we do have those guys that go for runs every day and, and do exercise at home like my eldest son, um, et cetera, that does two workouts a day now that he has time during lockdown. But that's probably not the general population. Um, so I want to talk today a little bit about our return to play, return to work, return to our normal exercise and, and routines. Um, let's start talking about our student athlete, uh, student athletes, um, those high school, uh, high school students that are looking at a term four and looking at going back to school. They're looking forward to their summer sports seasons. Um, what do we have to keep in mind now from the sports science point of view, from the injury prevention, from the areas that you teach, Ben, what do we have to keep in mind about coming back to play and coming back into also that student life that um, student athletes have to embrace? Well, yeah, I guess now is preseason. So it might, it may, it may have been the start of the competition, but now we've just had this extended off season or, or extended preseason. So, I mean, if, if you are an athlete, you need to consider this time it's, it's no longer off season. You've got to start building up um, and getting into some preseason work. Um, because if you wait till you can actually go to the coach, it may be far too late for you to get your, uh, your fitness and strength up to standard. Now, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult when we don't know exactly when we're going to get out of lockdown, when we're going to be in our actual playing environments. Um, there are return to play protocols that at schools that are saying that they need at least two weeks lead in into the practicing of the determined sport before they can actually go out and compete against other schools, whether it's basketball, whether it's the, the, um, the track and field or the tennis or whatever the summer sport that is happening now in term four. Um, so how do, we, how do we motivate that young teenage student athlete um, that has been seven weeks in lockdown that probably started with an exercise routine that was pretty on the up, but probably plateaued and started going on the down, knowing that we are probably going to get back into things in a, in a few weeks, but we don't know exactly when. Yeah, like that, that, that two weeks before we start competition, I mean, that's, that's probably necessary for skill, for skill development or team cohesion, but it's definitely not um optimal for strength and endurance and um, cardiovascular capacity uh, i know that my son um, looking forward to the seventh season his coach has set up a hayer group and is giving them tasks and get them to videotape getting them to do their their broncos videotape it seeing how many push-ups can you do in two minutes and then send that through and then the next week it was um, a Malcolm circuit, videotape that and send that through the app. So, I mean, I think that's brilliant. Um, during this time, this is where the, the mahi has to be done, the work has to be done to get ready for a good season. So utilizing those type of things, I think is brilliant. 
So, so you uh, and, and I know you're a little bit like me that you're always embracing new technology, new um, new ways, new channels of communicating and getting things done. Um, so, do you think at, at at this time when your athletes, as a coach, your athletes are spread spread across the the Auckland horizon, um, do do we need to try to test different channels of um, so our athletes can start developing that strength and fitness so they're ready for a term four summer coach season? A hundred percent. I like, I think what, what my son's sevens coach has done is definitely on the right track. Like here's your, here's your workout um, to be done whenever fits in with your lockdown schedule and record it for me, send me your time. Uh, so those things, bringing some accountability into it, making sure everyone's sending their, their times in or their videos in to start building a team culture before you get back. Uh, I think that's, that's brilliant. And that's a model we nearly re- really need to pursue. Um, even, if, even, if the, uh, even if the students uh, fudge their times a little, as long as they got out there and started sweating and puffing, I mean, that's what we need in a preseason. Talking about preseason training that student athletes are having to embrace by themselves at the moment and to create motivation, um, a lot, a lot of, a lot of kids now and adults wear these fancy smart um, uh, watches that have trackers. How can they help? Oh, yeah. I mean, depending on your sport, if you're a weightlifter, probably not very much at all. If you're a runner, then then brilliant. Yeah. So. Any, any feedback or motivator seems to be a, a great thing to pursue at this time. Yeah, and, I, that, and that's a little bit my, my, my area. You need to find, definitely you need to find motivators uh, where you can have self-accountability, especially at the moment when you're actually training on your own. Um, the, today, for example, I got um, on my phone, I got um, a notification saying that I've actually ran or walked the distance of the Hawaiian archipelago because that's <laughs> a big morning friend. Good work. Well, no, no, over time, over time. But, but you know what? It's probably been over a long time, but those 521 miles um, was actually really motivating to see this morning saying, Hey, you know what? Um, I'm pretty happy about that. So this is a, this is a, a good heads up for, for student athletes that might be listening or coaches that might be listening to um, the paddock. Um, Kids have phones. They're with their phones all the time. They tell them to have one of those apps that will count the steps, the distance. They don't have to have a fancy fitness tracker on their wrist. Um, it could just be the phone. It, like Ben is saying, it might not be as accurate, but it will have some motivators that will just pop up as notifications telling the st- student athlete how well they're, they're doing or how much they've done. So that's a great um, accountability tool. The other one that I always strongly recommend is write down at the end of your day, write down what you've done. Um, you can't be accountable to yourself if you are not aware of what you've done during the day. Um, that's a first step. Forget Forget planning ahead because, yeah, you might not be as motivated at the moment. You you're, don't plan ahead. That's fine. That could be the next step. But at the end of the day, on your phone again, pop out your phone and put in what you've done during the day. Um, after a few days, you look back and you can see, hey, can I actually do a little bit more over the next days that out that are coming up? And that's when you can start planning. But first, get a, a self-awareness of how much you are actually doing? How much are you? How much mahi are you actually putting in? Like Ben is saying, in regards to developing that strength, developing that fitness, because um, I really take on what you're saying, Ben. Um, those two weeks before you get into competition, when we get back into the normal world, um, it's basically for that team, team cohesion and that skill development. Um, but the fitness, you're going to be huffing and puffing if you haven't developed it of now over time. So um, by the looks of things, we, we have a good three weeks um, as lead in. Um, how much can a, can a teenager uh, or a student athlete up until their 20s um, do in three weeks? Um, well, there's huge variability depending on the individual. 
but it's almost a case of um, if you don't, then you're more likely to suffer on the field because you're not fit enough to perform, so you don't enjoy yourself and get injured because you put yourself in situations that your body's not acclimatized to. And yeah, like Strava and MyFitnessPal are two really good apps that, like you say, do that GPS tracking. Yep. Um, yep. And both for um, inspiring you to keep going, but also um, for the coach to see, hmm, if you're doing 100K a week and it's the start of your first week uh, of your preseason, well, we need, a, we need to temper your enthusiasm to cut it down because we don't want an overuse injury from compressing six weeks of work into three. So we need to be sensible in progressive loading uh, rather than stepping straight up to mid-season type volume. Absolutely. Now, what would be your expectations? And now I'm, I'm taking now you more into that health um, field that you're, you're an expert in. Um, what would be your expectations to, for the summer code seasons? Thinking at term four that goes November into December um, in regards to the, the health uh, injury prevention side for student athletes. If you had to prepare your scenarios of what could happen, um, what would you be giving hints of? Look, let's look to the coaches. Let's watch out for these things during the season or don't have your expectations to be at this level because this is what could happen from, um, from the health and, and injury point of view. Oh, well, yeah. So what we'd be, what be concerned with is when you, when you don't have preseason or you compress it too much, then instead of the normal season slowly tapering up and building your physiological capabilities to your maximum and then getting into the season, if we don't have that long taper, then our, our joints, our muscles, our cardiovascular system, it's not prepared to accept the loading that you would in a normal season. So we'd expect more, more overuse injuries if you expect a normal load to be absorbed by your athlete. All our, our bones, our tendons, our muscles, they accommodate to progressive loading. So if we don't have enough time to progressively load, then they're not gonna be at capacity when we hit the season. So yeah, some allowances may have to be made in, in volume so that we don't get that happening. So rather than thinking, oh, we've only got a week, let's do six weeks of work in that week, um, that may be um, a bad idea because you're asking, you're asking a, a mini to accept the load of a Mack truck. Perfect. Now, um, for coaches now, thinking of coaches, what would be signs of overloading that they could actually be picking up from their athletes when we come back? You mentioned like now, if they see that on the my fitness pal, they've done hundred K's worth of work in the first week, that would be definitely a sign. But as we get back into our normal conditions, what would be signs that um, an athlete's overloaded when we don't have obviously the GPS trackers on our athletes at a, at a high school level and all that kind of stuff? Um, well, pain is a, is, a, is a good thing. If someone's limping or if someone's showing signs of pain in their shins and their feet, um, whatever specific to your sport, sport, then you think, well, we've really got to back off and change our training um, to accommodate. Um, if people are irritable, have trouble sleeping, like this can be a sign of, of overtraining, um, which is going to be hard to determine because maybe people are stressed because of our current climate as well. Um, yeah. Have you, have you ever had some experience um, with the wellness checks, uh, Ben, with, athlete, with athletes? Uh, not me personally, because I, I don't coach or train. But you're okay. talking about like a checklist of how are you sleeping? How are you eating? Yeah. How are yeah. your, yep. So that, that seems like a great thing to in, implement. Yeah. Uh, so what, what one have you heard of or what one do you use? Uh, well, I've designed a couple 
of uh, wellness checks that I use with uh, athletes just to get a gauge and a trend and a pattern of, from their environment because they customized the environment that they're in uh, would be different for uh, rowers than it would be for a rugby team than it would be for a tennis player, you know, um, but uh, customize the, the wellness check, but pick up things like, for example, hours of sleep. Um, to, to see what is actually happening and, and try to get the athlete to identify eventually through conversations um, what parts of their routine during the day might be affecting their overall wellness. Um, obviously, the, the training load, if you're going through pain, well, are you incorporating something into your routine to actually alleviate that pain or treat the cause of that overtraining. I'm not the specialist on the overtraining, but at least allows to generate that conversations with uh, strength and conditioning coaches, etc. So yeah, so I've, I've done that. Um, and again, a tip for coaches, this could be done in multiple ways. It could be done through Google Forms. It could be done just by conversations as long as we are writing down the data so we know uh, what kind of patterns we're trying to pick up from our, from our athletes. But it's, it's that kind of thing. So we as coaches can be mindful as well. Uh, what is the reality of our, of our athletes? Um, also thinking of student athletes, um, a great concern is going into term four and you, and you have hi, uh, high school uh, boys. I have a high school boy as well. And two, two kids that have gone through high school. It's that whole exam period, you know, preparation for the end of the year. It's summer. I want to be out. I want to be out having fun with my mates, but I also have to get some of that study work done. So um, there, we'll, we'll need a really good balance now in this term four with our student athletes so they can actually perform indoors in the classroom and outdoors uh, as well. Um, mm. Regular population, Ben. Let's so let's switch a little bit from student athletes to now. Let's think of the parents, the regular populations, the mom and dads, the you and me. Um, how do we get ready for this return to play or regular action? I have to tell you the truth, Ben. When I go out and I go out for walks and I see too many people, I get really tired. I just get visually tired. Um, it, it, I just get a little bit visually stressed, a little bit visually tired. And when I come home, it's usually like, man, there's too much action going on in front of me. Uh, how do we? How would you recommend we prepare for our next step uh, in the next few weeks as we return to play or our normal work environments? Those that have been out of work and going back to their normal work environments in a few weeks. Oh, before we go into that, just a, a tip with regards to sleep. Like, there's some good research out showing that if you if you decrease the amount of sleep you get, um, it it slows down muscle muscle growth. And it also slows down fat loss. So a lot of the kids they see on social media, you're supposed to wake up at five o'clock and you go for a 12 hour run. And then you, you work all the way through the night and you get two hours sleep. And, and the rock, the rock doesn't yeah. sleep apparently. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I don't want to cast suspicions on the rock's good name, but potentially he's got some special supplements that help him with his athletic development that our student athletes wouldn't have. So, you know, it, maybe it's important to emphasize to the student, if you want to get the gains, sleep is where it happens. And yeah, I, I get it. It's very easy to, to stay up all night playing games or on your phone, but you're losing all the gains you get when you sleep. And if, um, if they're trying to lose fat and gain muscle, then that's when it happens. So helping a student understand that, yeah, the rock may do that, but the rock's not you. And we don't know what his nutrition or supplementation re regime is. So you need to look after you and this is where the gains are made. So if you want an extra two kgs so you can hit the scrum and tackle, then you're making them when you sleep. And the more of an athlete you are, the more sleep you need. So it's, it's kind of the opposite of that work ethic that gets shown us on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. So again, educating your athlete so they can get it. You know, our gains aren't made in the gym. They're made in the bedroom with your head on a pillow and your eyes closed. Absolutely. Um, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a huge advocate of that. Um, I remember having... Uh, late last year, early this year, uh, an awesome conversation with a sleep therapist from Auckland uh, Hospital. 
um, around sleep and uh, and the values. And I remember he summarized it as, you know what, the best performance enhancing drug that you can have is sleep. And then he actually recommended me a book that I can't, I don't have the I can't remember the name of the book off the top of my mind at the moment that I, I went and, and did the, the audio book listening to it. And Andre Iwadala, the, the Golden State Warrior, he's a huge advocate of sleep. He, he was one of those guys that didn't really believe it. But, um, but, but he's become a huge advocate of sleep, how that just getting proper routine hours of sleep um, and for extended amount of times, he says, changed his basketball game. It completely changed his basketball game. And it has to do with all the things that you, you were talking to us about, um, Ben, I mean, which you know much better than I do uh, in regards to the, the whole recovery, the muscle build and, uh, and, and the losing of fat, which is so important, which I think I should be probably sleeping more. And I mean, it, for you, you think ice bath, compression, um, stockings, massage, all these things, um, sleep. You know, sleep is a recovery tool and sleep is a performance enhancer and it's free. Absolutely. So yeah, as, as, long as, the, as long as the student athlete understands, then they can take that knowledge and use it. And if they're motivated enough, they'll, they'll put it on board. And we've got, we've got studies out there showing that if nutrition is the same, and activity is the same. If you take away people's sleep, you take away their gains. Huge, huge. So huge learning, huge learning to take away for student athletes, uh, especially as you're trying to peak, you're trying to actually do better every season, every code that you're, you're, you're practicing, go back and reflect and be mindful of your sleep. Uh, again, I love these things, but they're, they're, um, they're horrible for your sleep. Um, yeah. um, so use your your screen time um, timer. Make sure that the phone doesn't work after a certain amount of time. Uh, if you're having trouble putting it down, put it there, that screen time timer, make it shut down for you. Make sure you have the, the night light um, application on. So basically the glare is different. So it allows you to start shutting down when you're trying to go to sleep. Um, limit the amount of hours that you can you are on certain applications like social media. How many hours are you spending on that? Because it does become a bit addictive and then it takes you into your bedtime and into your sleep. And then all of a sudden you're doing another 30 minutes, 45 minutes on whatever app it is. So if you put a timer on those apps of how much you can use during the day, you can always ignore and go back and use it. But at least you're becoming mindful that, hey, you know what? I've used it for more than two hours. Or you know what? Uh, I had an hour on my Snapchat. I had an hour on my Facebook. I had an hour on my Instagram, and all of a sudden, all three are expired now. So holy heck, I've already been three hours on my social media. Um, so it just becomes a great acknowledgement tool that you can use. And again, you all have this. You all have this. So this can actually be a good recipe as well if you use it correctly with all the applications that it has to make you a better athlete in terms of making it give you notifications and reminding you of where you are with your preparation in terms of your chosen sport and where you're going. Cool, 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 cool. In, now, um, in anatomy and physiology at the moment, we're actually doing the endocrine system, which are all the glands that secrete hormones into the body. And with that one, it's melatonin. So melatonin is a hormone that gets released when the sun goes down. So in your eye, you've got receptors. And when they notice the light levels are decreasing, it releases melatonin. Melatonin is your sleepy rest and digest hormone. So getting your body to prepare to sleep. So when you stick that phone in front of your face, you're stopping the stimulus for releasing the sleep hormone because you get this blue light hitting your eyeball, telling your brain it's still daylight, stay awake. So that's one of the reasons why uh, devices are not so good in that hour leading up to sleep time. Any student that's listening to the paddock today, you can use that and reference Ben into your <laughs> end of the year assignment. 
all right? That's the value of these conversations. Uh, we want you to use these conversations in regards to the, uh, the assessments that you're preparing for school, um, either the sports leaderships, the, the PE. Um, if something like that comes up, hey, listen to this podcast, get some of this insight, put it into your assignment, reference Ben Reynolds. Um, but if you have any questions, do put them in the comments. Um, we're happy to discuss this further and provide a little bit more insight uh, into what affects your performance, what affects your uh, gains in becoming a student athlete. Um, and if this helps towards your uh, assignments, preparing your assignments uh, in PE, sports leadership, et cetera, uh, health, um, we're more than happy. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. We're more than happy to actually address them in a, in a future podcast. Um, let's go to regular population, mom and dad. Mom and dads have been struggling. Um, I'm one of them. I've been struggling during um, lockdowns and extended periods of sitting behind a desk, behind a, a screen like this. Um, how do I prepare my return to play, my, re my return to being my normal self? Um, are you going back to sport or are you watching sport, Fran? Uh, good question. Um, I don't know how, tell you the truth, I think this is one of the problems with adult selves at the moment. We don't know how the rest of the year is going to really plan out. So that uncertainty is I'm not sure I'm going back to coaching. I think I'm going back to just doing individual exercise. Um, that's going to probably be me, individual exercise. And um, probably going to the gym. Um, that's, that's probably me um, towards the end of the year. And the recreational swim that you, we normally have. Oh, kayaking as well, but I think I'll, I'd struggle with that at the moment. Yeah, um, the, the the gym I go to is WikiWorks, yep. and it's it's a functional fitness type gym with with ropes, with barbells, uh, crawling on the floor, doing all sorts of movements. Um, so of course that's been that's been shut. But what Ruben and Santa Wiki have done is they've done Zoom classes. So six o'clock, 12 o'clock and six o'clock every day um, for all the members, it's free Zoom classes. Um, so, I mean, that's been good. It's been like half an hour of, of something. I mean, it's, it's definitely not ideal, um, but it keeps you ticking along up here and, and here. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit nervous to get back into the gym and see just how far uh, down my fitness levels have gone. But that, that's been great. Um, and I'm also very lucky that I've got lots of weight. Uh, I've got a treadmill, a bike um, set up in the garage. Okay. So it's all there. And the, the thing I'm nervous about is um, I have to get up at six o'clock for that class on Zoom. Whereas before I had to get up at five o'clock to drive to the gym. Right. So I don't know how I'm going to get back to waking up that early. Yeah, I think and that's my, one of my issues as well, just waking early, because it basically I have a probably 12 second walk from the kitchen to my office now. So, um, so yeah, I think that's my issue. And but, but I have one of the issues I have. I have a, a set of, of weights here, and I have a few bits and pieces that I could probably use a little bit more, but I don't. And I pro I'm probably your typical middle aged guy that has been doing a lot of work from behind the desk, um, going out for my walks, trying to do my occasional run, but it hasn't been consistent like when the gym's open and you're going on a regular basis and doing your, um, your sessions at the gym. Um, what, um, what should we expect when the gym opens? How should we face, <laughs> how, should, how should we face that, uh, that, that walk in again? Yeah, see, I've got, I've got one son who uh, on his on his phone he's lucky if he hits a thousand steps a day uh, because he goes from his bedroom to the toilet to the couch uh, to practice mma or football on the xbox yep and then to the toilet kitchen then back to his room and um he's a bit of a worry and then my other son he's he's in the gym or he's running and he's he's doing two or three or more workouts a day um, so yeah, he's a bit of a worry too, because he's the opposite extreme. Right. Um, but in this lockdown, he's put 20 kgs on his bench press. 
Oh wow! So impressive. Like he, yeah, he's he's really been dedicated, and also with his nutrition, he's constantly eating because he's in that he's in that age group of he's growing and he's really lean, so he wants to build mass. So this lockdown has been his dream to get ready for the seven season. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Let's um. Let's, uh, let's think of, of recommendations. Um, we're getting to the end of the year. Um, I know that we were gonna talk about a little bit of recommendations of how to get back into the swing of things uh, from a health perspective, from an exercise perspective, but we kind of covered that for uh, uh, already a little bit. Um, let's go back to our student athletes. I think we've, we have touched upon our student athletes um, and, and students um, quite a bit in our, in our podcast uh, today. Um, recommendations going into the end of the year and preparations for next year. Um, what should they be looking at? I mean, we, we've heard that um, NCAs have been moved, NCAA exams have been moved, et cetera. Um, how, how should students be preparing? And, and yeah, I know I'm asking you, and I'll switch a little bit what we were planning to talk about, um, because I know you have some very good videos in, in terms of how to prepare for study, um, how to prepare for exams, et cetera. Um, what recommendations could we give uh, students facing term four and eventually um, their futures in 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 twenty twenty two. Make a plan. Yeah, I mean that's 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 one hundred percent what you need to do. Unless you're going to do exactly what um, what you're talking about before, being stuck on your phone and the day just disappears, then you get stressed out, and then you go back on your phone to distract yourself from the fact you you're stressed. And then you get more stressed out because you're running out of time. So the, the sooner you make a plan, the better. And, and plan, um, plan for your phone time, plan for your gym time, plan for the things you want to do, plan for a TV break, and then make sure you put in the things you need to do. And prioritize the things you need to do and reward yourself with the extras. So yeah, you're going to go on Snapchat and Instagram and stuff, but let's get an hour of anatomy done, then I'm going to get my reward. Yeah. Fantastic. The sooner you plan, the better. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I think planning, um, goal setting is, um, is a huge thing. Um, if you're having trouble with planning goal setting, well, uh, get in touch. Um, we, that's, that we, we do this. We recommend this to, to students all the time. But um, but do the effort also of starting to acknowledge how, what is it that you're doing during the day. And that's a simple exercise by just writing down what you remember you've done during the day. Um, and if you've noticed that, hey, man, I've spent too much time doing the, the phone thing. Um, well, let me cut back on myself a little bit and then I'll start my plan from there. I'm going to cut a little bit back from the phone and see what else I can stick into to my day. A- absolutely. Uh, what's in store for, for you and the school of sport in 2022? What are, what are the big plans for 2022? What are what, if you had a wish list? what do you want for 2022, uh, Ben? I just want lots, I want lots of students to walk in the door and in my classroom so we can learn some anatomy and physiology. That's Absolutely. all I want. Absolutely. And, and, um, and is that on the degree or the diploma or on both? Everyone. Cool. Like, cool. Every, like everyone's pathway is going to be different. Like we've had, we've had people come in who have been the, the, the top of their class just straight into the degree and do brilliantly well. And we've all also had people with English as a second language who failed in school and they've come back and they've started at certificate level, then progressed to diploma and then pathwayed onto degree, um, who've also done extremely well. So it's, it's education is always going to be good and we don't all enter at the same level um, to get to the same result. And that's fine. It's not a hurry. It's not a race. Uh, I agree. Um, and j- just for the for our listeners, uh, at Manukau Institute of Technology School of Sport, um, the School of Sport offers what qualifications, Ben? Uh, we have a certificate, diploma, and degree in sport and exercise. Um, we also have uh, programs that if you're academically challenged and you've had a a bad situation with your academic history, then you can come in and take those 
development programs to get you at the level to then pathway on to further education. So even if a school was a write-off for whatever reason, then there's still no reason why you can't access education. And we've got the level to fit whatever to pathway out you, pathway you up. So if I'm, if I'm a student and, and I go like, oh man, I, I think I want to study sport. Um, why go to the school of sport at MIT? And um, why would I go there, first of all? And secondly, um, what program should I go for? Okay, I, I do want to do sport, but what do I apply for? How, what, what would give me a better direction? Uh, why it comes to MIT is you know your lecturer and they're going to know your name. And it's applied so that we don't just learn about what ATP is and the lactic acid system, et cetera. We're going to get you in the gym and we're going to make you feel that so it makes sense. Um, one, of our few, one of our former students, he would, he would vomit a lot because he would, he would know what... Um, uh, lactic acid and, and buffering of hydrogen uh, feels like. But that's um, not the normal. Not everybody's vomiting in class. Not everyone's <laughs> vomiting. He, he was a special human being and he's now a, a teacher in Master Lynn College. A wonderful yeah. man. He's a, he's a very wonderful man. I, and I'll, I'll just back you up on that. Um, one of the things that before COVID hit, um, we, were, we were having is a uh, yearly international internship uh, trip and he went on that trip and he was remarkable he was actually remarkable we were over in Latin America um, and um, and actually yesterday I've sent um, a message out to one of the people that we met down there just giving them, them an update of how far our students that were on that internship have gone um, and, and and they were they're going like this is fantastic it's great to see how they contributed in their short internship over here in Latin America but also know how that was the start of their uh, educational career because they've gone into into education which is which is great um, so we have the certificate the diploma and the degree um, if I'm a student and I want to study at MIT uh, school of sport because I, I, I like I, I think I want to be in class with Ben um, I'd say you know what give Ben a call send Ben um, a message, um, send them an email. Uh, I think you'd be happy to talk with prospective students, wouldn't you, Ben? I'd love to. Can't yeah. wait to see you next year. Yeah, and, and that's a whole thing. I mean, uh, as it's at school sport, the lectures are close. We know your name. If you don't know what is the right qualification for you, get in contact. Uh, we'll, we'll actually have a conversation. We'll say, look, with, with your background, with your interest, uh, with your obligations, this might be the best option of study for you at the moment. Uh, on top of that, we also have contextualized uh, diploma in sport, which we teach out of the county's Manukau Rugby Union and the Franklin Bulls. So if you have an interest specifically in basketball or rugby or community sports, uh, it's, an op it's an opportunity to study a diploma when you are actually directly involved and interning throughout the whole year in the community sport organization. Uh, it gives you a great experience of going into schools, working with high level athletes, developing athletes, but looking at that whole spectrum, really where sport is happening. So all those options are available. Um, we're happy to talk, talk to all of you and actually get you excited about sport and a sports career. A sports career study starts with your interest, continues with backing up with education, and then it can go as far as you can imagine with your interest in developing a career in sport. Uh, to close off, Ben, anything else that you want to add? Um, education is never wasted. Like often people enter, enter the school of sport thinking I'm gonna do a certificate and I'm gonna work in, in a gym. And then through the certificate, they, they learn more and pathways open, and you don't know what you don't know. So the more you learn, um, the more doors open, and the more your mind opens to future opportunities. So just walk through the door and make the first step, and you don't know where you're going to lead. Awesome, awesome. And to close off, I have five questions for you. Hopefully you can respond them pretty quickly. Um, the first one is your favorite subject that you teach. I like structural kinase. Nice. Why? Because um, it's ridiculously boring. 
but um, we do our we do our best to make sure it's fun and it's entertaining and to give it purpose. So structural kinesiology is learning all the bones and all the muscles, which can be pretty dry, but we use we use games and online competitions to try to make it fun. And then going through the physiology of muscle contraction, we tend to do um, to do plays or role plays. Um, give students names as the different molecules as they walk through the process of muscle contraction. So we, we try to make it um, entertaining um, as well as informative. And like, it's the basis of everything. Like, unless you know where a muscle comes from and where it goes, then you don't fully know how to contract that muscle or how to stretch it. So it's, it's the basis of everything we do in sport. Fantastic. Second question. Favorite research area? Um, uh, injury prevention and rehabilitation. I mean, being a physiotherapist, um, that's where I came from. And I want to see people back on the field playing sport. Nice one. Nice one. Favorite pastime, Ben? Hobby. Am pastime. I allowed to say teaching? <laughs> I'm sorry? I enjoy my job. Am I allowed to say teaching? I enjoy yes. my job. I love, I love seeing, I love seeing people go absolutely blank with all these big words on a whiteboard, and then slowly the penny dropping, and them being able to give me the answers. So, uh, I really enjoy what I do. I'm with you on that. I, I really, really get a kick out of my. I, I find it hard to call it work because I really, I really enjoy it. And sometimes I'm, I'm on a real high uh, when you see that that light bulb just go bing and um and students going like whoa where they were and that whole light bulb started to shine and it's just really really uh motivating it, it, it really energizes me um i've had during this lockdown as well in some one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of our students i've just hung up that uh that video call and i'm going like whoa that that was just great it's just made my whole day so i'm with you on that that probably is I'll, I'll join you on that pastime. We'll hang out together a little bit more and do it. Uh, uh, the next one is something that others might not know about you or will have no idea about you. Um, I've run ultra marathons. Yeah. So at the moment, my, uh, my puku is a, is a bit big. Um, but, and I look like I've, I've eaten a few pies. But uh, in the past, I've run ultra marathons. Awesome. Awesome. Love to have been able to ever do something like that. And it's very admirable. Um, and finally, your favorite sport or sports? Mostly whatever my kids are playing. Like uh, I get a, a vested interest in the athlete. So uh, when they were growing up, it was karate. And then they decided that was, that was enough of that. So now my my youngest son is playing rugby and then going to play sevens so that's going to be what i'm most interested in Fantastic. and also he's getting into weightlifting as well so apparently i'm now going to be into weightlifting awesome awesome how about for you growing up what was your go-to sport i played rugby league go the mighty howard corner there you go. So shout out to the Howie Cornicks. Uh, so actually they can join <laughs> this, this, this podcast. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thank you again, uh, Ben, for joining you, uh, joining. I think um, as this uh, podcast, the, the paddock uh, develops over the next few months, I think you're definitely going to be on for a more specific topic on, on a learning area, which we're going to try to un, un, unwrap on the, on the program. So um, I'm very th thankful that you came on to this first uh, episode of the, of the paddock, Ben. Um, wish you all the best and wish to see you hopefully soon in person, uh, picking up my SCOBY. Yes, yeah. for your kombucha. <laughs> for my kombucha. So just so you guys know, um, uh, ben also uh, does his own kombucha, and that's going to be my next project of wellness, of creating my own drinks at home. So um, I'm, I'm going to be picking up a, a SCOBY, which Ben can explain to us later on in, on, on, on a podcast. What is a SCOBY? Uh, what does it do and how does it work? Um, team, thank you for joining us. Um, if 
you want to hear more from the paddock, what it's about, what we're talking about, how it can help you in your study, in your sports development, in your motivation, um, subscribe, like. If you're interested in finding out a little bit more about the MIT School of Sport, feel free to leave us a comment or get in contact directly with Ben Reynolds. That is ben.reynolds at manukau.ac.nz and he can talk to you a bit more about the MIT School of Sport and the pathways of study that you can have in sport. Is that correct, Ben? Good is good. Awesome. Well, till the next episode, thanks for listening and we'll be catching you later. See ya. Happy lockdown, team.